Radiusing the board is usually done with a sanding block, a long level sanding block, and I'll be using one of those, but I like to start off the radiusing process, rather than just sanding away all that wood by hand, by going in with a hand plane first, and putting in the basic curves. Here I've got a core which has the radius I'm using, which is 12 inches, that I can use as a rough guide and a ruler to check that my thickness stays consistent. Now a basic radius has been put in with hand planes, it's time to switch to the radius block. This is a long piece of aluminium uh, with a 12 inch radius curve and some stick on sandpaper. Basically you put it on and sand away. So here we are our nice radius fingerboard. Looks really good actually. I'm still not a hundred percent sure what the wood is but I think it's Jarrah. If it's not Jarrah then it's a wood that's very very like it. When doing the headstock transition I tend to go in and remove as much as possible using tools like gouges and violin planes. So I go in again carefully working away from my hands and just take off little flakes gradually working down until I've got something close to the surface I want then I sand it. This little tool, the violin plane, if it's properly tuned and sharpened is surprisingly efficient at this type of work. Another thing I use sometimes are microplanes. They're very good, especially the curved ones for getting into these profiles. Here's our basically completed headstock. You can see the transition here. The fingerboard is radiused now and it's time to go on, polish the fingerboard, put in some inlays and get fretting. Let's get some inlays happening. So what I've got here is a piece of aluminium that I've drilled I've put in six, uh, sorry, 12 6.5 holes and 12 2 millimeter holes, and then I fill it with clay. And this stuff is Fimo Classic Modeling Clay number 43. Um, this is supposed to be very, very close to the stuff that um, Fender used for their clay dots in the original Stratocasters. So the color is very close. We come in and we fill up our dots. Then the clay gets baked in an oven for about 30 minutes at about 110 degrees Celsius. Now running down a center line, I'm using an awl to mark where my dots are gonna be. So, in order to drill these holes, I've been using this type of bit, the little pointy tip, and it's 6.5 mil, and these are great for getting really, really clean holes in wood. And there we have it. Looks great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. Now, it's time to go in and polish the board. And I do that with progressively finer grits of sandpaper. It's been sanded to 80 grit, but here I've got a shorter radius block, which is um, 12 inch radius, and I've got 120 on here, and I'll basically sand this all over, and then move to a higher grit. So it's sanded up to 1200. Now I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's really got a beautiful kind of mirror gloss now, and that's as high as I want to take it. So in order to radius fret wire, we run it through this little machine here, and that puts a nice, consistent radius on 
which we can use. So let's go through the fretting procedure. I've got my pre-radiused wire. I put the tiniest bit of tight bond on the underside of it. Then I place it carefully into its slot. Hammer it in. Cut it off. And here I've got a vise set up with a call. And the call is magnetic. And what happens is it goes over the wire. And I simply put the neck in and gradually tighten the vise, which then seats the wire. And you can actually hear it pinging into place if you listen very carefully. And here's the finished product. I've given it a quick coat of lemon oil, but here you can see the frets all done, trimmed and set in. Now it's time for my favorite part of the build. This is of course carving the neck. And what I do, I lay out all my tools. There's a Shinto rasp, another sort of random rasp, a gouge, various scrapers, um, a block plane, a couple of micro planes, a violin plane, and a Japanese knife. And basically, I've marked here the rough outlines, but I have at it. All I really do is go for a specific thickness and then just carve until it feels right. And I love doing this. It's a soothing, pleasant thing. Right, so now we've got our basic carve. There'll be a bunch of shaping yet, some final shaping around here and so on, but the fundamental shape is in the neck and we're very, very close to this part of the build actually being finished. Here's the layout for the control cavity. This is where my knobs are going to go, although these aren't the knobs I'm using. Um, and I checked also that there's room for all of the pots to fit and any capacitors and other bits and pieces that I might put in there. So now what I need to do is drill three small holes right through the body and that being done those will act as the guide and then I'll work out exactly how big to make the rest of my cavity and uh, do it from there. Now what I've got is a brace with a force and a bit and my back cavity, the three holes have been drilled so I know how my cavity is going to be placed. Now all I have to do is just drill out with the Forstner bit, placing it down and bringing it along. And these guide parts will let me know that I'm not straying off the line and I can drill out as much material as possible. So I've drilled it out clean it out. 